by the Nigerian Air Force. The Nigerian Air Force provided three helicopters and the United Nations Humanitarian Air Service also provided you know, four helicopters. They were used in evacuating all those. So we can safely say that all those that, that were in critical condition have been evacuated you know, from, the, from, the, uh, from the scene of the attack. Um, but the remaining people there are those who have minor injuries and we believe that they can be taken care of by the medical teams that are currently in Kadabalgi. Is this the first time this is happening? Because don't forget that we've seen uh, reports uh, by other organizations and sometimes some subtle cry from some communities that uh, uh, the Niger military has uh, uh, killed some of their, their members. Uh, is this the first time uh, such misfiring is coming from the Niger mil military against uh, Nigerians? Well, to the best of our knowledge, this is, this is the first time that we are hearing of this formally. Others have been allegations. And if you go back to the counterinsurgency operations, you discover that between 2013 and 2014, even in Meduguri, there were cases of disharmony between civilians and the military. There were instances where people were maybe uh, the military was attacked because then Boko Haram members were still living in Meduguri and Jerry. So there were instances where they, they would come and attack the military and then when the military comes, you know, they will go haywire and, and just, you know, hit at everyone. And, and, and it was, you could understand the frustration of the military. The military at that time was of the opinion that residents were actually not um, involved in the counterinsurgency, but the whole of that has changed. Like you have seen, there's a revolution of, of the whole people of Borno State against the Boko Haram. So, but, but I must say that in the last one and a half years, there haven't been such allegations of people complaining about the military, you know, attacking them. They have not been that in the last one and a half years. This is an unfortunate tragedy that happened. It's a very, very painful one. But we cannot throw away the baby with the bathwater. We that's all a, know... That's, that's, that's double, double yeah. jeopardy for these yeah. people because uh, truly, as you highlighted, it's quite an unfortunate one. Yeah. It brings everyone down when you talk about issue like this. Uh, it brings us to the plight of displaced persons. First, they are already displaced, dislocated from their communities, from their society, and now this. Take us through what these ones are going through because uh, it's also making front page that uh, some of their food uh, and supplies uh, have been diverted. Some people sell them in the market. Is an opportunity, a window for some people to take advantage of a political space. When Boko Haram was still in Meduguri, majority of those we have there is one constant individual, the former chairman of the State Emergency Management Agency. His name is Gray Macharab. If you look at all the reports, just Google, do your research, you realize that. He has been the constant voice of all these allegations. And the reason is because he aspired from SEMA to become, to go for the Senate, and he lost, he didn't, he, I think he was screened out or something like that. He didn't even participate. So he has been the constant voice. And because he is from SEMA, I have video clip of all that he was saying when he was chairman of the SEMA. You'd be surprised when he said settling, it. But then, settling, this is not about him, and uh, certainly such allegations uh, are not uh, from us. No, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Now, that's, I'm just giving you a background. I want you to take this assignment, go and start. And I'm very, care and that, I'm very, very careful. Yeah. I want us to be mindful of mm. uh, things we're saying yeah. so that we don't, uh, if you can't substantiate some of these issues, uh, you've No, raised. I can. I can. I can absolutely substantiate everything that I say. I'm a journalist. I know exactly what I'm saying. I have all the evidence. I can, I can contradict him. I can give you a video of all that he has said before and what he's saying now. And you'll see the contradiction yourself. I have the videos right in my phone. But that's one aspect of it. If you look at the investigative report carried out by, by the cable news, 
As a journalist, I was really impressed when I was going through the report of underco undercover reporter who, who, who claimed to have gone into the IDP camp, slept, came up with all kinds of videos. At the end of the day, there was something he said that to me contradicted the entire report. He said the IDPs were chanting that they wanted Grey Matara back as the chairman of SEMA. That's politics. So it contradicted the entire investigation. Anyway, well, 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 the bottom well, line is the, this. The, the bottom line, the bottom line is that we'll go on a uh, we'll go on a quick one yeah. now. When we come back, we'll stay on the issue, and it has to do with the plight of, of the displaced persons, no especially problem. in Borno State. Join us again.